Hello, race fans, and welcome back to On Pit Road. It looks like there was some more drama in post-race uh, engine inspecting. Fligatron, what do you got for us? Well, you'll recall a couple weeks ago that NASCAR sent out a memo to Hendrick Motorsports about their engines and their cars were close to being illegal, and that if anything else were to happen, penalties would be enforced. Now, the cars that were in particular being monitored, chase leader Jimmy Johnson's and second place driver in the chase, Mark Martin. Now, ever since that point, every week NASCAR takes three random cars and three random engines, takes them back to their R&D, which is research and development shops in North Carolina. Now, this week, uh, the cars taken were winner, Kurt Busch's car, obviously, along with Mark Martin's and Jeff Gordon's. Now, ever since the memo has come out to Hendrick warning them, at least one Hendrick car has been taken back to North Carolina to the R&D shop every week. Now, Mark, do you think this is just a coincidence, or does NASCAR really suspect something further going on with Hendrick? Well, there's there's no surprise that the race winner went to the uh, the the race the back to North Carolina. Yeah, I don't think there's there's, any problem there's no that. you know that that's going to happen. The winner is always going to go. Now you take fourth place finish Mark Martin. Okay, maybe he's in the top five. But 13th place, Jeff Gordon, who yeah. had a really bad car the it whole time. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It's, it seems to me that, you know, they maybe they're going to justify it because he's in third place in the standings. I don't know. But they didn't take Jimmy Johnson, no. who was the number one. Um, well, they really... I, I think that it's just... I, I, I don't know. I think NASCAR is is taking these guys backwards because, of, like you said, the memo that had already gone out. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that they think they're cheating? That's Who up knows. to NASCAR and the viewers to decide. In Johnson's defense, though, his car was a mess. His car was a mangled mess. There, you really, you know, you couldn't do, you couldn't, you couldn't expect this car for nothing. There was nothing there that you can do. But one important note: 14th place finisher Martin Truex Jr. failed post-race inspection um, for his car being too low. On Tuesday, it was announced that he will be docked 50 drivers' points. Not a big deal because Truex is not in the chase. But had he been in the chase, that would be a much bigger story than what it is. Okay. Well, every week we've been uh, taking viewer mail on our website, and we've been deciding to close this, close our uh, close our show with with some fan mail. So I'd like to take a few minutes to answer some of the letters we've been receiving on our Facebook page. Alex Touch from Edward Edgewood, Maryland asks, "Dear On Pit Road, which driver, if any, has the best chance of dethroning Jimmy Johnson next year?" Well, that's a really good question, and uh, lots of drivers can come to mind uh, to me, but there's a few that stand out, a handful. What do you think? Tony Stewart is my number one guy, just for the fact that he's won championships before. Earlier we were talking about IndyCar. He's, one of the, he's the only driver that I can think of that's had a successful transition from IndyCar to NASCAR. Now, Juan Pablo Montoya is getting close. Stewart's a proven champion in the past. He's, he's proven that before. With his own race team this year, in his very first year, he comes into the chase with a 273-point lead coming into the chase. That's remarkable for a guy with their first year with the team. I think if you give him another year, maybe two years, to develop his team further, watch out for him. He's going to be competitive. He'll challenge the Hendricks, which had the big money. And remember, his cars have Hendrick engines this and is, Hendrick bodies inside true. of them. So he has an advantage there. So I think you have to watch out for Stewart. Well, I, I'm going to have to agree with you. The magic word that you've been saying, Hendrick. One of those guys is going to be the one that's competitive, whether it be a guy with a Hendrick motor like uh, like Tony Stewart or his or his teammate um, Ryan Newman, Ryan Newman Rocket Man. or it's going to be one of the other guys at Hendrick, your Jeff Gordon's, your Mark Martins. Hopefully next year for all Junior Nation, Dale Junior yeah. will be competitive. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, by he is good. He's very very good, and he's going to be tough to beat. The guy's won more races than anybody this entire decade, so. For someone to dethrone him, they're going to have to have as good equipment, if not better. And that truly lies in the Hendrick Motorsports stable. Anyway, let's move on to another letter. Jeffy Warner from Philadelphia writes, Dear guys, if Jimmy Johnson succeeds at winning his fourth Sprint Cup championship, does that make him the greatest NASCAR champion of all time? That is the $6 million question. Another good one. Um, that is, that's tough. That, that is a tough question. Only because Jimmy Johnson, yes, he'll have four championships, which has never, ever been done before. Four in a row. Four in a row. Four in a row. Yes. Four in a row. But they've all been in the chase era, which many would argue that you don't have to dominate all year and you can win the championship just doing well in the last ten races. Take this year, for example. Stewart coming into the chase with his 273-point lead. Mm -hmm. Completely wiped away, and now he, matter of fact, trails by 170 points. This is true. This is true. And then you look at drivers like Richard Petty, who have seven championships. Uh, 
the Intimidator. Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt, Earnhardt who has seven championships. The man in black. And they had them back when you had to dominate all year long to win these things. Does it make him the greatest championship champion of all time? I don't think so. Does it put him up though, up there with those greats? Absolutely. 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 Without a shadow of a doubt, it puts him up there. And to say that it doesn't would not be fair to him. It'd be foolish to say Absolutely. that. It Absolutely. It really would. Well, you look, go ahead. Sorry. You look at a guy like Richard Petty. Seven titles tied for most all-time. 200 wins, the most all-time. Nobody's ever going to have 200 wins. Mm -hmm. Now, back in the day when Jeff Gordon was still younger and he was winning all the races, people thought he would challenge. No way. He's got 86. Is it 82 or 86? I believe it's 86 wins. He's not challenging Petty. Jimmy Johnson, as many races as he wins, as dominant as he is, he's not going to challenge Richard Petty. So to say that anybody's better than Richard Petty right now, honestly, I think it's foolish to say that. Richard Petty is the man. He's called the king of the sport for a reason. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Connor. You are welcome. Well, thanks for the letters, guys, and keep them coming in. Go to our Facebook fan page for On Pit Road, and, and just we'll, we'll see what we can do. We'll see if we can answer as many questions as we possibly can next week. Anyway, that brings us to the final word. NASCAR seems to be stumbling a bit these days, which brings me to my final word and the green-white checkered finish. There was a time early this decade when it seemed that no one could derail the train of success that NASCAR seemed to be riding. Money and sponsors were flowing in, and millions of fans were showing up at the tracks and tuning in on television. It seemed that NASCAR could do no wrong. But when NASCAR cited safety reasons for the repaving of tracks like Bristol and the introduction of the COT car, the racing changed dramatically, and not in the way that NASCAR wanted. Due to changes on the cars that make the adjustments that can be made extremely limited, it just bunched the cars together, making the race downright boring. Tracks like Bristol that used to boast exciting physical racing now offers two lanes for drivers to gently float around the track. NASCAR, we know that you only have the driver's safety in mind, but these guys are race car drivers in 800 horsepower stock cars, not soccer moms in minivans. They know the dangers that go along with their craft. When you limit competition, you take away the thrill of the sport from the drivers and the fans. It's time for NASCAR to wake up and go back to the racing that made stock car racing great in this country. Anyway, that's all the time we have for this week. Join us next week when NASCAR goes into Phoenix and we talk about the end of the year. I'd like to thank Connor Flegel for joining us and putting up with all my stupid nicknames. No problem, Mark, and I'm sure you'll have a whole list for next week. Thanks I'm for sure me I will. Anyway, race fans, keep the clean racing going, and we'll see you in victory lane.